Hello everyone, I just want to take a second and let you know that I recently won a contest on Jazz's channel. If you haven't seen it already, then please click the link in the description and check it out. It's pretty different from my normal videos. It shows a lot of behind the scenes footage with some really cool video editing tricks. It's about six minutes long, so I think you'll definitely enjoy it. I'm really, really proud of it. I worked really hard on it, so it would mean a lot if you'd go click the link in the description and check it out. First of all, I need to give Jezza a huge thank you for giving me the opportunity to be featured on his channel. I've been watching Jezza on YouTube for a really long time and he's become a big inspiration to me, so it's honestly surreal that he picked my video to be featured on his channel. So definitely go check that out. And more importantly, I want to give a huge welcome and a huge thank you to all of my new subscribers who found me because of Jazza's video. I hope that you like my videos and that you stick around for a while. I definitely have to say that I have received the love bomb that Jazza told you to send my way, so just thank you so much for all of your support. And along with that, I need to give another huge thank you to all of my subscribers who have been here for a really long time, continuing to support my videos and the work that I do. It means a lot to me that other people enjoy my videos as much as I enjoy making them. On my channel, I love combining all of the things that I enjoy, music, art, animation, my favorite movies and TV shows and songs, and so it's really awesome to see that other people can enjoy my videos as much as I enjoy making them. So today I'm also going to do something a little bit different from normal. I mean, one, I'm showing my face and talking. I never do this in my videos. But also I want to do some more behind the scenes footage. I know a lot of people have been asking for tutorials and behind the scenes to kind of get a better glimpse of how I make my music box videos. So I'm going to do that today. And I am going to be making the Up Music Box video. I already have this video on my channel. You've probably seen it. It's one of my more popular ones. Um, but it's been a few years since I made that, so I kind of want to make it again, see how I've grown as an artist, see how my sound quality and video quality have improved. I've definitely started to incorporate different tools and techniques in my videos, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how I've grown as an artist. Maybe I'll try and sprinkle some animation in there, we'll see. Um, so let me know what you think. Here's a montage of me making the Up Music Box. The first step to any music box project is picking out a song. The music box that I have is limited to 30 notes. Most of these notes appear in at least two octaves, but some of them, like C sharp and E flat, only appear in one octave. This can make songs in certain keys more difficult to play. As you can see, each horizontal row corresponds with a different note, and how you space them out across the sheet will determine the rhythm. The music box also has different limitations with rhythms. For example, playing 8th notes or 16th notes of the same note in a row is impossible to play on the music box, which makes certain pop songs more difficult to play on the music box because of their re repetitive nature. Thankfully, the song Married Life from Up actually translates really well onto the music box. It's in a good key, good rhythms, I don't have to omit too many notes, and it sounds really pretty on the music box and very nostalgic. After I'm done punching out the notes, it's time for the drawing. The music box paper that I use is actually a pretty shiny material, which makes using colored pencils more difficult, which is why you'll notice that I almost exclusively use markers. If you watch some of my older videos, you'll see that I do use colored pencils. Some brands of music box paper, it worked well, but even still, you can see the colors aren't nearly as vibrant as when I use markers, so I pretty much use markers now. But you'll also notice that sometimes I cut out drawings and glue them onto the paper. I do this for a few reasons. It does allow me to use colored pencils when I draw on other paper, obviously. But also I think it makes the drawing stand out more. You'll notice all the grid lines on the paper, those sometimes get in the way of the drawing. And so when I draw on another piece of paper and glue it on, I feel like it makes the drawings pop out more from the background. Also, as I mentioned before, the material is shiny, which makes sketching and erasing a bit more difficult, especially if I outline in black marker and then erase it. I can't do that on the music box paper. Because it is so shiny, the markers often can rub off after you use them, which is nice if you make a mistake. But if you're trying to sketch in pencil, then outline in black marker and erase it, that's not going to work. So there's a lot of advantages for cutting out pictures and gluing them on, and I've noticed that throughout the years of creating music box pieces. A common question I often get asked is how long it takes me to create these. Well, they take me a long time. And not only that, but I'm also a college student, so I have a lot to do, which is why I can only make videos about once a month. 
I wish I could make more. If this was my full-time job, I could probably get videos out once a week. But unfortunately, I can only get videos out once a month. If you run out of room on one music box sheet, which you probably will, then you can cut them and tape them together and it works just fine. I've seen techniques where people cut them diagonally to make them a bit more smooth and not bend as much, but I usually just stick to cutting them regularly and not worrying about it. When friends see my music box in real life for the first time after seeing my videos, they are often surprised because it is a lot smaller than they were expecting. So these next clips are to give you a better idea of how big my music box and music box paper really is. As you can see, this music box song in particular is extremely long. When I decided to do this one again, I kind of forgot how long this one is. But I'm really proud of seeing my progress as an artist so far, and I'm excited to see how it turns out in the end. And if you are too, then please subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll know when I post the final video. It will probably be uploaded in about a few weeks. As you can see, I have a lot of work ahead of me. But in the meantime, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. If you have any more questions about the process of how I make them, please let me know. And also let me know if you like this style of video or if you prefer my regular videos. Anyways, thanks for watching, and don't forget to think outside the box of music.